Good morning, Rab Boisai! Ah! Vivi Nishma Simi Morosi, Ruspas Mordechai, today's sheer sponsored by Paris Achoydish, Muli Hecht, in honor of those Latnik F200, Akiva Solkowitz F94, Sholm Rand F202, Shmuel Davidowitz B202, and the official 8 Minute Daf Yomi Committee. Sholm Rand this morning sent me a, a very cute um, meme, what is it called? A guy trying to catch up. You gotta see this. Maybe we'll show it one day. If we had this uh, thing working, guy's trying to catch up on his daf yoimi that he missed on Yantif. And as he's getting dressed, he's in the shower, and as he's mowing the lawn, but then as he's mowing the lawn, his gemara flies forward and the uh, lawnmower eats up his gemara. That's the end. It's pretty cool. Yossi Statman, Lili Nish was my father of Imari. Tzvi ben Aftali Meir on the 16th yard side, 26th of Tishrei. I think that was yesterday. We, we missed it a little bit. He survived Stalin's work camps. Psh, I was zeichet to leave a legacy of Torah observant Jews. Talk to Rabbi Aliyah. Daniel Aberbrook, his local town. Florida, memory of the 30th yard site of Lana, Deitche, Goldberg, Leo, uh, Goldberg, Leo, Bas, Moshe, Leo. Sister of my wife, Ellen Aberbrook, brother in law, Dr. Norman Deitche. Uh, uh, uh. She's remembered for being an outstanding, that's the first time that happened in three years. Edu- outstanding educator, author, and a woman of valor who is always devoted to the family she dearly loved. Mayor Neshama have an aliyah. You should say that again because there's a. You'll say it again. Mayor Gwertzman, happy birthday, Shlomo. Love Tati and Mami. Psh. Andrew Fuchs, Lili Nishma is my grandmother. Regina Shalom. Sholoma. Sholoma. Rezel Basit Schok Levi on her yard side. May she be Melissa Yoisha for all of us in Klai Yisrael. Right now, Rabbi Yisai. Live in New York, the oil of New York is in a shul by uh, Rabbi Nochem Rabinowitz. Where is it? What's it called? Manistritz. Manistritz. There you go, Manistritz. It's Shlemy Klein Akiva Ziegler for putting it together. How many guys do they have there? Four? Oh, here they are, live. Oh, I said, there they are. Beautiful. Shalom Aleichem. All right. Few emails. You don't need to share this with the group. Okay, so I'll read it. Uh, this is from Jeff Rosenberg, who put up his first sukkah. And he says, it was very difficult for him to take down the decorations and the lights. Then something changed. As he started to roll the schach to see the sky, I thought of what it must have felt like taking down the sukkah for the last time in a strange land, knowing the next time I was going, going up was an energy stroll. I started participating in MDY to fill my head with Tyra and instead, it filled my heart. I once heard someone say on Silva's Torah, when you take a la- the last letter of the Torah and put it together with the first letter, you get the word lave. It sounded contrived at the time, but today for me, it was real. I told myself I was going to take a break after Beitza, but now I'm going to stay on this journey for longer than originally planned. All the best to you and your family. Thanks again, Jeffrey Rosenberg. Shkoya. Just want to read some of the new guys, some of the old guys that brought in new guys. So once again, if you bring in a new chaver, somebody new, you get a beautiful limited edition Gemara. And don't forget the raffle. Full art school shas and an MDY tour. Chance at an MDY tour. You get to have dinner with? New, what's your name? Know my name, we got a foul. Nachman Seltzer, the one and only Nachman Seltzer. And the one and only Avi Mandelbaum. He is the one and only. I know he said that he's not the one and only. Meir Simcha, get over here. Meir Simcha. Call him Meir Simcha. Get over here. Bona. And you sit next to me, right over here. You know what this is? This is my nephew. This is a Victor Katzwick's son. Say Shalom Aleichem to everybody. It's first day in the daf. Get down. I get a free Gemara, boys. I. You have to ask him who brought it in. Who brought you in? Who? Foreman? A guy from the Machina? You know him from the Machina? He goes to Machina. No, you know I'm from other places. Okay, so you get some freaking water. Ugh, is this close? It's not working. All right, so anyways, where was I? So you have, oh, 
You get to be, you know about this. You don't know about this, but I said that you get to spend a full day with Noam Fix at the seminary. Run a seminary for a day. That'll encourage them. <laughs> anyway, Mayor Kovacs, who was part of this year, brought somebody in. Arnold Braun, Harry Mayer, Ephraim Gwertzman. I wonder if this is the same people that just had a birthday. Daniel Dex, Yitzi Jablon, <laughs> David Kantler, Yitzchok Friedman, Fischl Gross, and Fischl Gross. He gets two Gemaras, Fischl. <clears throat> He's giving all the Gemaras. He gets two. Yitzi Jablon. Again, Yitzi Jablon. See, some guys are doing double. Look at this over here. Mati Itzak. Three times. Three guys. Andrew Klempner. Natan Erez. Eli Shilian. Ephraim Jaffe. Eli Shilian, Eli Shilian. These are the same. But Rabbi says it's a small group of people that are bringing people in. Everybody here should bring people in to learn Torah. Avi Berg. He's the one that put up, he's the one that gave me that, that giant piece of meat and he smoked it up. He's giving out a free piece of meat to anybody that joins. So look how many guys you got. <laughs> Avi Berg, Avi Berg. Yosef Goldbard, DJ Alter, Jeffrey Del... Ch- I can't even pronounce the name. Mati Izak. Okay. By the way, Raboisa, Yoni Spar, we have to thank him. Tremendous chesed. Avi Kamiansky is in Minneapolis and Yoni Spar took him in. Not realizing that if you take somebody in from the eight minute daf, from the MDY Hebra, he's going to convince you to do the daf. So he joined the shir. So it's, <laughs> all right. And I do want to thank Yom Zarachi, Yom Zarachi, for donating 25 Gemaras. Who else do we have here? Mori Varoba and Arielev Kazowski. Shkoyach to all those who don't. We need a lot of money. There's a lot of money missing, about a good 30 grand. So here we go. One last one here. Um, he says, it's 1 a.m. in America now, and I just finished, this is by Mo Landy, just finished standing by the Ribbon Cerebus Caver for 13 hours, kemat, straight, for crowd control with Haverim of Rockland. I am wa- wiped. 13 hours, he's wiped, and can barely stand, but I cannot go to sleep without doing the daf. It's times like these where I really appreciate how much Yashir has impacted my life. P.S., I would love to hear more stories with you, a Litvak, and the Ribnitzer Rebbe. Thank you again for everything, Mo Landy. I don't have many stories about the Ribnitzer Rebbe. I was a very young kid. I mean, two things. I said this before. So I used to sit on his lap and he was doing Tehillim. And he's a little bit overprotective of me. And he said, he told somebody, So I asked my father, what does that mean? He says, L'chayre means that he's my moil. But he wasn't my moil. But that could explain the other shot. He said, this kid's going to be Galadar. So maybe he confused me with another kid. <laughs> I don't know. But those are the, that's basically the only thing I remember. Okay. I remember him going out to the mikvah, coming back, going out. Okay. You need a Gemara? We are doing today Daf Lamed Gimel, and we're holding on the last line of Lamed Beis and Beis. Oh, my Rabbi Yehuda. Hi, Medurto. Oh. Eh. Do we have time? I'll just show him. We'll say this tomorrow. Can I have her back? Okay. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's email. Hi, Medurto. So Rashi explains it, not so much like this picture. I, I just, this is literally not what Rashi says, but for illustrative purposes only. A person builds a bonfire, four walls, and then some sort of top also. And that creates an oil. And Rashi says that they used to do it for very important people. Maybe that's why today they do it for Rav Shem Chai. It's like a, it's an honor, a big bonfire for somebody. Choshev, milamalo lamatashar. So the Gemara gives a number of examples that because it's yantif and you don't want to look like you're making an oil, you start in the reverse. You take the plank of wood, instead of building it from ground up, you start from the top down. Interesting. You hold the top piece of wood and then somebody puts the, the, the bottom pieces underneath and you go right there like this. You get away from doing oil. Milamalo lamata shor. If you go from top to bottom, it's okay. Milamata lamala also. But from bottom to up is a problem. And we're going to see. This Rav Yehuda, just pay attention to this for a second. This is Rav Yehuda, not Rav Yehuda. And we don't paskin like this. 
Because Rav Yehuda was a Talmud of who? Omar Rav Yehuda, Omar, Shmuel, and Omar Rav. So he's a Talmud of Rav. And we don't pass him like Rav when it comes to, to we'll see soon in Shabbos. So therefore, this is not going to last, but let's just remember this for the future Rashi. Now Rashi, Tysus also points out that when you make an oil, it has to have like walls on the side. You can't just have like some, a floating thing on top, uh, uh, some sort of piece of wood on the top and say that's an oil without walls. You have to have the walls. Okay. Top of the An egg. So Rashi says a large egg. Why a large egg? Because the Chari Rashi is saying that we need, we're, we're concerned about an oil. So it needs to be a large egg that's like a tefach that creates an oil. So how would you do it? You put the egg on some sort of device, a tripod, uh, some sort of grill. Some, so instead of putting the grill down and then putting the egg, you take the egg, you put the bottom, and then you put it on the... The kids, so you go backwards. The chain, kedero, this we had yesterday. Something like this is also an oil. You put two barrels on the side. You put a pot on top. So you got to do it backwards. You put the pot, and then you put the two barrels underneath it. The chain, puria, a bed. So show me, remember this thing? Like in the army. So instead of putting a cot, instead of putting the feet, the, the legs first and then the, the top, you put the top, you have people hold it, and then you insert the feet and like that. It's motor, you're not concerned about the oil. V'chein, chavisa, and it's the same thing, very interesting. You're piling up barrels, take the top one, and then put the other ones underneath it. Who is that? Mendy on the safari? <laughs> Mendy Arabach, we miss you. When are you coming back? Wow. Okay. So the Mishnah says two cases. You have a pot and you're, the pot is leaning a little bit. Your floor is a little, it's not so uh, straight. So you put a little piece of wood to straighten it out. And the Mishnah says, now, because there's a base, bidelas would seem to mean that I'm using the door, bidelas, the pot is going to be supported by the door. As the Gemara Bidelas Sokodaitach explains Rashi, the door is going to break. Why would I use a door, an expensive door, underneath a pot? Take out the base, it's not bi, it's ha. In other words, in a case of a door that you're putting a piece of wood to make sure that the door straight or whatever it is, doesn't open. You're not allowed to do that on Yontav. That's Misak and Mona. Turn around, Bona. Ain't some things like there be vikas. Rena delas. Lefi shaloy nitnu eitzim elas soko. Oh, so now, also a line that we need to read, to remember. This is the sheet of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda holds that wood is there for one reason only. Wood is there for hasaka to burn, to use for a fire. Anything else is mukta. Reb Shimon, Mater, once again, Reb Shimon, when it comes to mukta, he's more makal, and he says that even though the wood is designed, it's there, why do people have style? scraps of wood? Scraps of wood are for the fireplace, that's it. Not to put under the door, not to put under a pot. And if you do so, you're touching mukta, using mukta, and that's also according to Reb Yehuda. So let's remember this review also. Five lines from the top. Wood is only for one purpose only. Anything else would be mukta. You were in the Chemi yesterday? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's a little bit, it's, I think it's a little bit more than that. Over here it's worse. This is, what do you do with wood? Typically speaking, this is, Okay. I don't know. I don't think he's that, because uh, we said yesterday specifically the Rebbe Yudah argues on Rebbe Nechemi. When we had the three steers in the Brises, and we said one Brise goes like Rebbe Yudah, one goes like Rebbe Nechemi. So they obviously are not, they don't hold like each other. I think Rebbe Nechemi is more mach, more Mahmer. Because when it comes to wood specifically, it's only, in those days, people used, what? Right. I, I want to use, I want to use it also to brush my hair, but it's not something that I do with it. It's a weird thing to do. So 99% of the time I use it for wood in those days. Think about it. It's very cold. They need a wood. They didn't. Okay. Anyway, the 
The Mishnah says you don't take up a, a stick and control an animal with it on Yantav. Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, Matar. Lema, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, what does he say over there? Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, but Ka'avu Asvir Le. The Leslie Mukta. Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, L'chayra, holds like Rabbi Shimon, by Yechai, that what? There's no Mukta. That's why Rabbi Lazar says you're allowed to take the stick and control the animal. Lai. Ba'afil Rabbi Shimon, Ma'idah, it's possible that Rabbi Shimon, by Yechai, holds that it's Asr to use a stick with an animal. Why? Mishum, the Mechzeh, Kemanda, Azal, Lechinga, we're not talking about Muktza, says the Gemara. We're talking about that it looks like he's going to a dance, to a marketplace, that there's a lot of commotion. Why is he using a stick? Why is he taking that? He's going somewhere far. He's not just going from here to there. And that's a problem. And Yantif, to do something that looks like he's going to the marketplace is awesome. Chizra, let's see if I can find it. Oh, here we go. I had this in the desk since Yuma. Every day we were using this, the point. This is... This Rabbi Isai is a chizra. It's a skewer. You take this, it has a nice sharp end. Put in a piece of meat. Rav Nachman, Osar, Rav I'm taking a piece of wood and I'm using this for something else. I'm using this as a spit, as a, as a skewer. Says the Gemara, so we have a machlek. Rav Nachman says it's Osar, Rav Sheshish says it's multitudes. Biritiva, when it's not Roi, lahasaka. It's not roi for firewood because it's moist. Kula So once again, going back to the firewood. The main point is the firewood. But if it's wet, it doesn't serve any purpose now for firewood, so it's completely awesome. Smokes it. Kipligi be beshto. The machlaikis is when it's completely dry like this. Manda osar omar loch, lenitno eitzim el lahasaka. If you hold that it's also, I hold like Rabbi Huda, the wood was only given for firewood and not to grill with. What's the difference between using it on the top to grill the, the chicken this way, or I'm using it under the chicken to create a fire? It's in the same, it's a, we're, we're, we're trying to accomplish the same thing in the same place. And Mamela, it's Mutter. Ikidarmi. And so, another lashon. When it's dry, there's no machlekes at all. Everybody agrees that it's, it's serving that purpose. It's within the same. It's within the fire, within the food. When it's moist. Even though it's moist, he'll say, well, at the end of the day, you can throw it into a giant bonfire and the heat is so strong I'll take the moisture out and it'll still provide us some fuel. What's the halacha according to the Gemara? Ya bishta shari. Like the Gemara said now that ikidamri be a bishta kuli alma loy pligi. So when it's dry, no mach like is, everybody agrees that it's okay to use this fire as, as a spit. Ratifta osur. In other words, they don't hold the halacha of this svar that you can put it into a giant fire. And then Mela, it's also. So we have a few minutes here. We could do Rashi, no problem. Inside. Rashi do maskal bihilchasa, where the lines become wide, first time, seven lines above that. Bihilchasa. <coughs> says Rashi, ha chilchasa, I'll leave the man the isle mukta ikva. When the Gemara says here that that's Allah, it's not really. It's only according to Rabbi Yehuda that holds of mukta. But at the end of the day, we hold Kerib Shimon Svirle. We hold like Rib Shimon. So it's a beautiful Rashi to know. We passing like Rib Shimon. Bein uh, In other words, like this, this, this stick over here. This is, a, this is a question of Mukta. Or a piece of wood that goes under the door, under the pot. These are questions of Mukta. We passing like Rib Shimon. That there's no Mukta. Bein Bidavar Shainim Skavin. And the halach of dragging a bench, a dov shenim skaven, which is also in our sugya, creating a oil, the beginning of the sugya. I put two barrels and then a pot on top. I, I don't have intent to make an oil. So according to Rabbi Shimon, it's not a problem at all. Dov shenim skaven. It's a bit a little bit. Okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely not melech shemesh, but it's psikreish Huh? So what? Uh, yeah, oil right, right. It's oil right. You're right. 
Oil I right, but we're going to oil I right, oil you right. Bekulo sharu bein chizro bein smichas gdeiro is vakavas chavio is medrutik gdeiro. So all these cases, putting the pot on top of the barrels, vakavas chavio is umedurta and and putting being a bonfire gdeiro. What? Oh, oh, did I miss, miss that? Oh, sorry, I missed it. Uke Rebbe Yehuda b'machshire oichal nefesh. And we hold, yeah, it's very important that Rebbe Yehuda says that you're permitted. To do any melacha that's in to, to the step before oichel nefesh to make a knife to to shecht provided Rabbi Yisai provided you couldn't do it the day before says Rachamim yeah we're passing like Rabbi Yehuda Rashi says we're passing like Rabbi Yehuda but don't forget the sugya Rabbi Yehuda only says his halacha that you're allowed to do machshir oichel nefesh if you couldn't do it the day before. If you can do it the day before, then you cannot do machshir yoch nefesh, the step before making food. Okay? V'kulu shoru, therefore everything is motor, because we're passing like a shimon. Bein chizro, bein smichas k'dero, is l'akov as chavio, is umedurto k'dero. V'chol ha'maroyim, sh'os rus eile l'malo. All these, like Rav Yehuda, that were saying that it's osur, talmidu de rav avu. These are all talmidu de rav. V'rav sova like Rav Yehuda, b'mukta. Rav passing like Rabbi Yehuda. Vanan kaimel on Rabbi Shimon. Says Rashi. At the end of the day, when the Gemara says v'hilchasa, this is the halacha. That's not true. That's not how, that's not how the Shulchan Aruch passes. Although I do see here a tzion v'hilchasa. Okay, we have to see what the Shulchan Aruch says. Rashi says we don't pass it like that. I didn't look in there, but it seems like usually when there's a, a thing. Okay, fine. Dorash Rava. Rava holds like Rabbi Yehuda that what? Going back five lines from the top, that Eitzim are only given for Hasaka. Eitzim are there for Hasaka for firewood. So says Rava, Isha leitikhanes ledira Eitzim lito memud. She shouldn't go into your firewood storage in order to get one of these pokers. She needs a stick to, to poke the coals, to do something. Ud. This is a ud. Ve'od, shenishbar. And if this broke, also la siku biyantif. Why? Now it just developed into firewood on yantif. It's noilat. What if it's whole? Then you could use it for firewood. Lefeshim asikim bekelim, as the Gemara explains. You could use a whole kli, like we said yesterday. Ve'em asikim shiv bekelim. But broken, you wouldn't have used it before. Now that it broke, you want to use it. Shalom Aleichem. That's also on Yontav. That's Noilat. Says the Gemara, Lem Emra, the Rav of Rabbi Yehuda, Sefir Lei. This name Mukta. You're telling me the Rav holds like Rabbi Yehuda. Of the Allah of Mukta. He holds a Mukta. Again, anytime the Gemara says Isle Mukta, Lesle Mukta, it doesn't mean that Rabbi Shimon doesn't hold a Mukta at all. It just means it's limited to certain cases. He's very makel and noilad. He's, he's makel and other things. But there, there is a concept of muktzah according to Rabbi Shimon. Islam muktzah doesn't mean, oh, he holds a muktzah. Everybody holds a muktzah. But he's machmir muktzah. So Rabbi told his gabai, Tvili Barabzo, like yesterday. Go ahead. Omele Rabbi Lashame, Tvili Barabzo. And yesterday he said, Be careful of the coals. Over here he says, Make me a nice goose. Give the intestines to the cat. So you see, if Rava would hold of Mukta, how could he carry the intestines? The intestines are Mukta. He can't. He has to just leave it there. It's Mukta. How do you have a head there? Anytime we discussed, you have on your table a uh, I don't know, pizzuchim, different stuff, they're mukta. So you have a heter of a graf shurei, of whatever it is. And if Rav is makbina mukta, he should just drop the intestines there and keep on going. How is the shamish allowed to lift up the intestines, walk 20 feet, and feed it to the cat? Says the Gemara Hasam, Kivin the Masrichi, since if you'd leave it until after Shabbos, it would spoil. It's not, the whole, the Gemara's kasha is that it's mukhala adam. This is food 
the goose is for human consumption. And only afterwards I found intestines inside and I want to make something that's human consumption to animal consumption. We said that you can't do that, it's mukta. No, the intestines already thought about before and wasn't human consumption. The intestines were animal consumption. So I want to show you once again the very, very famous picture. I think Shmuel Eliwat said last time that he knows who took this picture. Who took the picture? Rabbi Yehuda Silver, Silver from Nachshon. What's the backstory over here? I found that like this. Very famous picture. <laughs> it's very famous. If anything. So anyway, the, the story is that in Kfar Hasidim, they had mice. So they brought a cat to get rid of the mice. So Rabbi Yehuda said, it says, V'nosati eisiv v'sadcha l'vimtecha. There's a Gemara in Brachas that we learn. V'achalta v'savata. You say in Shema. That if you own an animal, so mizanaisav alecha. You have to feed the animal, and you have to feed the animal before we eat breakfast, Rabbi said. So he went out to feed the animal, because it's our animal. If you, if it's not a cat, fine. So it's not Sama cat, that's the story. It's his cat. He brought the cat there. So it becomes yours. It becomes your achrayas. You have to feed the cat first. What are you laughing about? I heard the cat's name was Mando. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's what I was going to say. My son, my son, no, 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 it's not Mando, it's something else, because my son has a cat also, two cats. So I said, I said once in Sheer, well, I was in Chicago, I was talking about this cat, and I see him coming to, towards me. Now, the first, Maisa Shahaya, the first day we came back to Chicago after coming from Israel, we're coming to the house, and there's this cat, this exotic looking, we didn't know. The son didn't tell us that he brought a cat into the house. And it, it starts attacking us. It jumps and it had massive nail like claws and it's scratching us as a whole thing. And my son, I told you this, my son, but if you were new to the shear, we come to the kitchen, we sit down, and this thing is jumping from countertop to countertop, just doing like no problem. Bam, 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 lands on the table and looks at the food like this. No pacha, nothing. What's going on here? Anyway, so we're trying to go to sleep. About one o'clock in the morning, my 15, 14, he was 14 years old then, 14 year old son comes flying into our room. He's like, the cat attacked me. And he's like bleeding. And my wife is like, you're waking us up. It's one o'clock in the morning. Go to sleep. So he goes to sleep. He goes back to his room. And he comes flying out of the room. What happened was, when he came to tell us the cat attacked him, the cat snuck into his bed. So he closes the door, closes the lights, and goes into his bed and cuddles up. And the cat goes, ah! It's like the pachad that he had. Fine. But it gets better. My son's Kala really liked the specific cat. And the oil made fun of me. I said, this is like a descendant of a, of a certain leopard. But it was only like this big. So, yeah, leopard, leopard. But my today, it's this big. This big. And it's much calmer. It doesn't attack anymore. But his Kala is the one that got him into this whole cat thing. And she wanted this other exotic cat that cost $3,000 only. It's not a problem. And they only have it in California. So in order to propose to her, he decided he's going to buy the cat. But he's not going to go to California and pick up the cat. He's going to send my son, my 19-year-old. So he sends him without money. My son gets on a plane. <laughs> he gets to California. And, and he starts like, what do I do now? I need to take a taxi. The kids are... So, so. Fine. So now we have in the Mishpacha, Baruch Hashem, we have two exotic cats. They're different species, but the are two. Why? L'chaira. L'chaira. Why am I saying this whole story? Because Rebbe Yol Yopian taught us his side. Why was Rava feeding this cat also? Because Rava owned the cat, L'chaira. L'chaira, you have to say, Rava also owned the cat. And that's why Aaron Stefanski owns a cat too. Two cats, very makbed. He feeds them first, come on the table, go in the pot. There's a pot on, pot on, the, on the stove. You look, all of a sudden the cat's in there. Like, it's just, it's not mando. This is a whole different bria. This thing doesn't behave. This thing does its own thing. Okay, not recommended. All these things, I had nothing to do with it. I have... The sugar and the kids, don't, don't erase. <laughs> All right. What's the cat's name? Uh, don't, don't put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. It's, it's, it's his grandchild. I don't know the name of the grandchild. Do not show this to them. Now you're going to ask me what my, my daughter in law's last name is. Okay, fine. Put me on the spot. Couple of it. Okay, yeah. Zogdei Lagi Mishnah, sponsored. The official mission sponsored by official for Shlema for Brian Abbas Yendedvara. 
רב אלעזר אוימר. Yoni has a picture here. You don't have to look this way. You look over there. Say, come, come. Mr. Shlomo, come next to me. You got to come closer. Anyways, a person could pick up a, like a toothpick, piece of wood, a splinter, a toothpick, to put it in it, to use it for his teeth. Umagavev minachotzer umali. So we see, we're going to see there's two things here. The toothpick is in front of him, it's right there in his house. But a toothpick is not for firewood. It's not a toothpick, it's for his teeth. So there's two halachas going on here. Umagavev minachotzer umadlik kol mash bechotzer. Here's another picture. Umagavev, he gathers wood. Here he is gathering wood. From his chatzar. Now this is for firewood. So now we're going, we're extending it. Before he said, he, he takes this, this toothpick because it's in front of him, it's in his house. Over even if it's not in his house and it's, it's in the courtyard, he's also allowed to take, gather wood because now it's for hasaka, it's for burning. Mamer. Gathering peace. Yeah. yeah. Umagavev, look, first of all, all these things, this is for Eichel Nefesh, this is for Adlaka, this is Ayantav. Shekol ma'ashe b'chotzer, muchanu. Anything that's in your, Azoy hal, Rebbe Liezer, that if it's in your chotzer still, it's already muchan, no ma'amer, it's there for you. The Chacham Oymrim, Megabev, they argue on two things. Megabev, when you do this, gathering, it's only Mishal Afanov, not in the chotzer, it has to be right in front of you. It has to be, in other words, in the house. Umadlik, and they also argue on the toothpick. You cannot gather wood for a toothpick. You can only gather wood for a hadlaka or for a hasaka. Ein moitzim is so ur loy mina eitzim v'loy mina avanim. Here, chaval, if Shlomo didn't know about this, he would have showed us how they do it in the army. You have to make fire. Who? Baruch. Baruch can get up here. When they, they, when they. When they uh, put these guys on an island, how do you make a fire? Hardest thing to make a fire for an American guy to make a fire. So you're not allowed to make a huh? Yeah, without, without without a lighter, without matches, you're not allowed to create fire on Yontif. You're allowed to use fire on Yontif because of Eichel Nefesh, but you're not allowed to create. Why? Because it's Moilat. So the mission just describes different ways of making fire, different funny ways that we wouldn't know. Taking two pieces of wood, rubbing them against each other, creating a fire, creating a spark. And not with stones. That I think is more common today. And digging and hitting like with a shovel against a rock or something will create a spark. So Ravin will see. Mayim, if the sun goes through the water, and it's a, a very clear glass, says Rashi. It's like almost like a magnifying glass. It could uh, it could light it could light uh, that we've done when we were kids, right? The magnifying of the sun, something like that that creates a fire. That's. Do they take this out over here? These, yeah, less. Take that out. V'loim and rafim, v'melabnim es rafim litzlisbem. And here in Eretz Yisrael, it's called rafim the tiles on the roof, so you can't take a tile and heat it up in order to cook your fish on it. Omar Rav Yehuda, says Rav Yehuda, the Amoira, that Gimlam and Beis, sponsored by the White Hillam Group, for all those who need to do the first thing, please join us at the Hillam, the and sponsored by Natan. Hello. Koshnud. Puzchos for my children, I call them in the Vayar Yisrael, Yaakov in the Vayar, they should do well in Eretz Yisrael and have a cheshi of Torah, your Shemayim and mitzvahs. Huh? Yeah, yeah, the mission was by official. So, it says like this, anything that's oichel behema, Omer Av Yehuda, achli behema, if it's soft, soft straw, 
I could use it for a toothpick. It's not a problem. Why? Because at the end of the day, right now I can feed it to the animal. So I'm not doing anything. So therefore, I'm going to break it off and, and fix it and make it nice and sharp for my teeth. Because right now, <clears throat> it's like taking a piece of potato chip and, uh, and making it sharp. And you, you could eat it, so it's not, it's not a tikkun kli. Hey, sir, I've got a review, though. You're permitted to, to move branches that, that smell good in order to smell them. And to fan a sick person. And you're allowed to mush it with your finger in order to get the smell out. You're not permitted to break it up, like to break the stick and, and smell it. And if you did so, you're, you're not chayiv, uh, but it's also. Awesome. But to use it as a toothpick, what did Rav Yudah say? They're permitted to use it as, as a toothpick if it's soft and it's good for an animal. Over here it says, <clears throat> You're not allowed to. I, it's roy for an animal. If it's roy for an animal, it should be mutter. Not only that, So what's the answer? What would be the answer? What would you answer? Rachman, you learned the sugi already. Finish. I see. You knew both two things. Bam. You're out of here. No. <clears throat> it's hard. That's the way to say it. That's the, the, that would be the main answer. <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. So it says here, I say, Rav Yudha says that if it's nice and soft and an animal could eat it, I could use it as a toothpick. Over here it says you can't use it as a toothpick. What do you do? Says Rav Yudha, Omar Le, a very, very interesting Lashon. That Taisus says, why is this interesting Lashon? I've never seen this in Shas. He says, Hashto, Pato, have a kakashali. Had you asked me from a different bride that wasn't as strong as this, it would also be a great kasha. Just a Pato, have a kind of case. It's not the biggest this in the world. You don't, you don't have to bring a carbon. You don't get malchus. But it's the loser. It would be a bam kash on me because I said it's 100% mutter. And now they bring me a brisa that says, chayev chatos. It's even a bigger kasha. Usually in chas, when you ask a kasha, someone asks you a kasha, you say, you know what? That's not a good kasha because it's talking about hard and I'm talking about soft. End of story. What's this whole arichos? If you would have asked me like that, okay, I ain't enticed. <clears throat> Has a nice chat. Hello, Kitanya, he, be caution. Simple answer. The reason why it's also to use it as a toothpick is because the wood is hard. It's not royal for an animal. The whole heter to use it as a toothpick is because it's available to eat as for an animal. But if you have a, a potato chip that's not edible and you try to carve it out as something, that would be also. Says the Gemara, nice try. So what are you telling me? It's hard. It doesn't really fit. One of the words there, one of the, the sentences. You can take it in your finger and go like this. Now if it's hard, you can't. This wouldn't work. This works with like adasim leaves. You go like this, you break them up, and they smell good. Says the Gemara, you're right. No, it's very, uh, it's understandable. You're supposed to read it like this. There's two, there's two parts here. You're right, it's referring to soft. There's a, the Bryce is talking about soft and then goes to the hard. You can break it off if it's soft and, and you're permitted to use it and everything's good. That's great when it's soft. But when it's hard, you're not allowed to do this. And if you did it with a hard piece of wood, it's Potter Avalasar. Why is it Potter Avalasar? Why? It should be Asr. So we got a chak. It's, we need to remember this. Because you're not making a kli here. You didn't do anything. You're just smelling. If he made a toothpick, toothpick would be much worse. Because I'm making a kli. Over here, I'm just trying to smell something. How? By breaking it open. Okay. Lachs is by Shinov. But if I want to make a toothpick, you're not allowed. Now this is a deraisa. Making a toothpick on Yontev is a deraisa. 
says the Gemara. Tony Chadik called me Mirach boy. But then you look like the Mirach boy. Okay, so now we're just this is a freebie. If you have a contradiction, one place it says you're allowed to break the, the, the branch and smell, and the other one says you can't. What's the answer? Rabbi Zayr, Rabbi Chizda, like Ash, Rabbi Rak, and Rabbi Kashin. If it's hard, you're not allowed. If it's soft, it's really behemoth, you're allowed. Maskelor, Rabbi Akhlon, Rabbi Akhlon, Rabbi Kashin, am I loy? What's the iser? Why can't I break it to smell? Because maybe there's a xera. That you're going to make a kli. I'm going to, tomorrow, I'm going to make a toothpick out of it. But that's only xera. But at the end of the day, ask the Gemara, you're not mechaven. I didn't, I didn't try to do anything. I'm just trying to smell. I have a barrel, a sealed barrel. And I want to eat the dry figs that are inside. Well, actually, Kevin last is clean. I'm permitted to break open the barrel in order to eat the Gregors, as long as I don't have kavana to make it clean. By the way, this is the Gemara that everybody talks about when it comes to opening up a can of tuna on Shabbos. <laughs> Dagim tuna, of course. They eat minadaf tuna from now on. Huh? Dagim, dagim. Not getting into all the halachas, the chazanish was very, very makbid on it. He said that by opening up one of these cans, kufsat shimurim, or a, a bag of uh, milk, you're creating a kli. And especially in those days, today it's, I think, a lot different because nobody keeps these kufsat shimurim. Even if you open up a, a can of, uh, like, olives, people are very makbid to, uh, you know, get rid of the can immediately. They say it's bad for the olive, da da da. What? <laughs> They used to use it to put to, to, to store your the nails and the screws, you know, like they used to use it a lot. Today, nobody, it's in the army they still use it. Exactly. Okay, so over there's a problem. <laughs> but anyway, it's it's a need on. We're not going into the halacha. There's people say that a sardine can might be mutter because you throw it out of this. If you open up a little bit, if you poke a hole from the bottom, eh, because it's a problem. Just remember that it's a problem because you're creating a kli. And over here, the, the, the sugi is uh, somewhat over here. Show you them sachavis. You break open a barrel. Void. The two sons of Ravado. When we were by Rav Yehuda's house, have him a fashich. He would strip off the branches. Avion alvasa alvasa. In Hebrew, it's uh, what is it called? Allah. The the stick that the caps. Beat people up with? So the problem is Billy Club. Alvasa. Billy Club. Ah, forgot the chazo, the katoso, the nargi, the chatzina. Look, a branch, you could you could put it in the axe, you could put it in a pick, you could do, you could do things with it. I so you here once again. I'm not machavin for that. I, I did it for the, another reason. So so we have a machloikis here. The Sanya Rebeleza Oymer, Noitala in case of the Shilofan of Lachs of So that's the Rebeleza from our Mishnah. You're permitted to take a toothpick that's in your house in order to use it for your teeth. We had here the picture. Where was that picture? Avos. Oh, here. The trough. Okay, so if this is designated for animal feed, so uh, it's permitted. Now, now it switches. So it's very important to notice what's going on here. Rashi said, Vishavin Shalik the Menu, all of a sudden it's talking about that it's not Royal Lebehema. Second ago, we're talking about Avos, it's in the trough, it's Royal, it's for animal. No, now it's no more Royal for an animal. Vim so you're not allowed to break it. Vim Katmoy Shinov. And if you did, you use you 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 fashion the kli to open a door. You made a key out of it. So now you over it. So there is the So over here, Rebbe is machmer. The Mishnah is mekel, but over here because he, it's not royal achila. All of a sudden, he's machmer. At the end of the day. It's, it's not a big deal, say Rabbanon. Why? Because he didn't do it with a kli. He didn't take a special designed kli and, and make a kli. He did it with his hand. He broke it off. That's not a big deal. Over there in the case where he makes a toothpick, which is a kli, it's Isidar Raisa. 
hacha. But when you do it for b'samim lahariach, it's a st- much much lower. Potter avalaser. Sorry, hacha. Yeah, hacha by lahariach potter avalaser because it's similar to making a kli the iraisa, so it's aser. But it's, it's still potter. Rabbanon Kamri has some potter avalaser. But Rabbanu say it's not a big deal to make a toothpick. You're doing it with your hand. Ha-ha! When it comes to smelling, you go down a step, and there it becomes. Now, what about that one? We said before, it says in the Mishnah, you can break open a barrel in order to eat the dried figs. It actually shleis kav and clean. What does he do with that? When the barrel was broken before, and I fixed the barrel with some glue, I took some sap off the tree, whatever it is, tar, I glued it together. Now there's not, what's the problem? What's the concern? I'm going to make a clean? There's nothing to make here. It's a broken vessel. It's a bunch of broken pieces put together. So if I open it up, what am I going to do? I'm opening up a broken, a broken vessel. That's not the problem. One more piece of Gemara. You can gather wood from the from the chotzer and use it for firewood. Because it's already designated for the firewood. You can't oh, you can't make piles of it. If you make a pile, it looks like you're doing it for after yontif. Everybody sees that you're making a fire. You have a pot here. You're using it for now, and it's not a problem. Rabbi Sai, have a wonderful day. Yishkoyach, Yisrael Shlomo. Pshii. Alevai, shtagiyah kol yom. Shnesayim shas biyachad. Get over here, big hug.